Hello guys, Paweł Skaba from Kiwik Games. Uh, today we're going to talk you about uh, we have a clickbait title, we would say. Why do we even have a marketing department? So uh, I've called it a kind of uh, a kind of clickbait, mainly because it might sound a bit weird, uh, but thanks to my couple of the years experience working with both dev teams and marketing teams, I was going to explain you what are the main differences uh, between and those two uh, departments and just how to make the cooperation smoother and, and easier. So uh, uh, at the very beginning, quite short agenda. So uh, in the next slide, I will tell you very briefly uh, who am I and where I come from. Uh, then we'll go uh, directly to the details of uh, work of, for both development teams and marketing. Then a kind of question once again, why we need a marketing guy and then will be a case study and a Q&A session. So uh, this is me. I work for marketing for like over 10 years now. Most of them spent in the gaming industry. So you might be very familiar with those titles and with those companies like my current employers are Cubic Games and in the past Techland and then to uh, big companies not related to gaming, so Mobile Vikings and, and Amrest. Uh, the, the, the IPs to the games below mentioned like, you know, Dying Light, Dying Light 2, Bad Blood and so on. There were titles in which I was involved into, responsible as well for the releasing, except Dying Light 2, which is still in the development. But uh, I, I was helping dev teams and marketing teams working on those titles, uh, which mentioned on the slide. So, uh, as a kind of introduction, uh, so let's assume that our audience are development teams, members of the development team. And it's applicable to not only to you know, very technical people like programmers, like, uh, like I don't know, like game designers, but for everybody except the business and, and marketing. It will just make it easier for you to understand both sides of, let's, let's call it a kind of conflict, but it's maybe not the, the best word. So this is a kind of typical uh, software development process. The same is for game, uh, game development as well as software development. So you start with, with the initial idea, then you code, then you test and fix, and it's ready to the release. And we are starting all over again. So this is a process which is in most cases predictable uh, because more or less you know what, what you were gonna develop. It's based on a, on a fixed timing because usually gaming studios are working on sprints. And it's clear and agile because quite soon you know the results of your work. So it's a kind of nice rephrase that software development, so game development is like, you know, walking on a, on a uh, frozen water uh, because it, it depends when both water and specification is frozen. But it's not that easy as, as we think. So it's a question, do I think that developers work is harder than anybody else? Well, in many cases it is. There are a couple of the reasons behind. So first of all, you need to have a very specific knowledge and experience. You, you simply cannot jump into programming. You, you, you cannot simply know, hey, I will start programming my own game right now. You need to have a good programming background. You need to understand how the, how the technical software works and, and, and so on. The next thing is that technology often change. So you as a, as a member of the development team are quite familiar with the issues like, hey, I need to upgrade my unit engine or once again, there is an issue with Unreal Blueprints. And my favorite at the end, quite often that technology is buggy. And it's not a matter of both Unity or Unreal Engine. It's a matter of all technology which we use for the production of the game. That's why other people from different departments simply do not understand your work. Because for them, it's a kind of, a kind of black hole, black magic. Then they cannot and they don't want to undermine your opinion because they have no, no, no basic just to talk with you and to have a, you know, a regular conversation about that. And then at the end, they cannot provide their opinion on certain dev topics because if they are not on the certain level of awareness, certain level of experience and knowledge, it's simply, it's, it's unable just to, to discuss specific technical topics. So, of course, there is a different department, usually, or an agency. It's called marketing. So usually you have a, at least one marketing guy or two. Or simply you work with a freelancer or an agency. So more or less, this is how people from non-marketing departments and non-business 
think what people in marketing department are doing. So it's something between making connections, playing, watching YouTube, and, 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 and so on. Uh, even I heard a nice joke from a AAA studio CEO that even a monkey can, can be a marketing guy because even a monkey can throw you know, random ideas. It was funny for the first two seconds, to be honest. And then you can take a look on a typical marketing development process. Please do not jump into the details. It, it will just show you a better picture of what we are doing. In each company, it might be named differently. But usually it's always the same. We start with business strategy, going through brand and through marketing. It's always connected, it's always the same, and it's always up to the, the same things which we are doing. So yeah, you might think that I'm suggesting that marketing job is hard in development. So it's a kind of easy to explain that, that it's not, because it's simply different. It's different than the development work, different than a concept artist work. It's a totally different story. And it's also hard to understand. So there are a couple of reasons behind. The first of all, quite honestly, programming is creative. And no matter what people were gonna say, I would defend that statement that programming and development work is being a part of creative process. Because you can write the same line of code in different ways. One will be better, one will be a bit less good, but still it will gonna work. So let's stick to that. But, you know, interacting with a computer is always rational, almost always logical, and then I would say in 80% predictable. Because you've got that, you know, on console log, you see what happened, you see if the, the process works, you see if the, the code works perfectly, or it needs a bit of optimization. While marketing is not that kind of easy, because it's irrational, because the decisions are not made by machines, they are not made by computers. They are made by humans who usually base their decisions on emotions, on, on that, that they didn't drink coffee in the morning. And then, you know, if something works once, there is a really low probability that this kind of solution will gonna work for the second time as much as successful as the first time. And the last but not least, as a marketer, you are always trying to figure out new things, new approaches, they're communicating the same things. And if you observe how was behaving, how commercial brands are doing all the time, they, the product is simply more or less the same. There is not that much innovation in their consumer product goods, but the way they're being communicated to the people is a way different story. So, yeah. Do you really need a guy or a lady in marketing department? Few reasons why I think yes. So everything what we are doing, we are doing for the growth. We are not doing it for uh, praising ourselves. We are doing it always for, for your game, for your studio, or usually for the both. Our growth is not measured in bytes, queries, logs, or lines of the code. It's measured in dollars, euros, no matter of the currency users and the coverage those three elements so money what we are earning users and coverage is somehow the most crucial elements of each marketing uh, work marketing story then you know it, it, it's funny part because uh, sometimes i hear from development teams that hey why do you need to test that? Why we didn't release it on, on, on time? So mainly because we really need to test product, test certain features before going to public. Because you've got only one chance to release your game. And if you will to screw up, maybe the sales results, maybe the marketing will not be that, that, that great. Uh, especially that you need to keep in mind that we base on a user behavior. So we have, you know, we have millions of people who can interact with your game, with your story, with your feature. That's why you need to dig into the specific analytics to know them better. You know, working with Google Analytics might be boring, but it might be then useful when you are releasing new web browser game, or at least you're you know, looking for some specific elements, specific features. Or for example, what community are thinking about your, your game in early access? Yeah, and then more about analytics. Obviously, 
we need to have it. We love to base on a sales data, on a marketing data. You need to have a time to, to think about that data, how to utilize it wisely. But to be honest, if you don't have access to that data, and for example, releasing a game on the Nintendo Switch is the best example, you need to base on the second best bet. So our intuition. But please do keep in mind that it's okay for the first or second time, but you cannot make it all the time. It always has to base on some data because you need to learn as an organization. Your communication needs to base on something. It cannot be you know, somewhere uh, on the sky. So it might you know, happen that, for example, after six months of development of a certain feature, we'll need to cancel that. And yeah, it's a kind of tough decision, mainly because it might cost you like, you know, tons of hours or some specific number of money, like, you know, 20 grand. But still, it's better to cancel it before the game release than after that. And it's a kind of good example because even if we brainstorm about certain features, certain game element, or, or for example, a story, it might gonna sound really great on the brainstorm and a few days later. But when we as a team are gonna dig deeper and deeper and enhance it and expand the story and the feature and so on, it might gonna happen that the final outcome is totally different from what we expected. And still, it's better to kill it on that timing than later on. It's nothing personal. So often I hear from maybe not also a dev team members, but usually that marketers are not listening or not listening as much as your you know, uh, partner or friend is willing to. It's, it's not the case. It's always a matter that we are listening and looking for something which our audience will be looking for. Keep in mind that you as a technical person, you know all the technical aspects, the details, and you know the jargon. For me as a marketeer, I need to translate that into a totally different language of the language of people who are using, you know, plain English, plain Polish, all the different languages, except technical one. So they're looking for a basic information about the game. That's why it's so crucial just to translate somehow that very technical language into a different one. So just to summarize this part, yes, marketers love your work. In fact, most of them would love to become a game programmer, a person in the development team who's working on your game and just to be at that point of part, sorry, just to be that part of person uh, who's involved in the process. It's not a matter of the case when you're only marketing and that, that, that's it. But it's always a matter of being involved. So, Still don't understand why marketing is here. So I will sum up in the one bigger sentence. Let's call it that way. So marketers take your amazing work and knowledge and filter into transformation into different, uh, we will need to record it once again. So marketers need to take your amazing dev work and knowledge and filter the information into different language so they can communicate it to business and gamers as a better experience, more fun, or both. And the number C is the best one. So now do you get why marketing is here? So if somebody would say, yeah, yeah, that it's clear to me, that's fine. You can go for a full lunch break, but there is still more just to, to make it clarify. So let's proceed with a, uh, with a nice case study, which will explain to you how to talk to each other and make better games. I call it a common issue solver because on this slide you're going to see two different issue types. The issue which development team has in the past uh, in solving which I was involved and the same story from the marketing perspective. So let's start with the first issue. So a dev team is stuck on a certain development point and they don't know how to proceed just to make the game more attractive for, for the people, for the audience. How marketing can help. So if you've got a marketing person on board, just ask them for a marketing research. Let's face it, guys. You're not reinventing the wheel. There are tons of games on the market. There are many uh, which are very successful. 
especially in, in the most popular genres. So a good marketing research can be extremely useful. It can highlight what kind of features people are demanding. Just listen to your community and ask a marketing fellow for help and it will gonna solve tons of the issues which uh, technical people might have. Then the toughest one which I have ever had in my career, so communicating a delay. And we are not talking about, you know, one day delay, but something like months or even a half of a year. How to communicate it to the people, just not to piss them off and just not to lose them. So we're thinking about that during my time in Techland. Uh, it took us many, many hours just to figure out how to, to say to our community, community because those people are very crucial for, for, for us. So it was quite simple, just to be honest to the community, saying we are sorry, but we wanted to deliver the best game possible. So we need a bit more time. So being honest and making a clear statement, especially with a, you know, a real video, it's, it's sometimes the easiest solution and the, the best from the uh, business perspective. It will make you no harm and people will appreciate that, believe me. Obviously, you cannot overuse that. So you can do it like, you know, once or twice. But if, it, if you were going to do that like, you know, three or four times or more, it might gonna happen that people will just abandon you or not be interested in your game anymore. Uh, often we are having, you know, a discussion if the game is ready to be released, if, if it's ready to be shown to the audience, it's, if it's simply good enough. Then you can ask marketing to, for help. First of all, you can find in your community people who can play, play that type. Sure, you need to sign some documents just not to reveal the secrets of your game, but it's only a, a, a small piece of document and the feedback which you can get from your audience, it's really great. Sometimes I've been in a situation when a proper playtest made by community changed some feature in like, no, 50%. And I mean that 50% makes it better. Yeah, then uh, issue like people don't care about latest patch, engine upgrade, tech feature. So, just make sure that your communication is just simply for consumption. By, meaning I, by consumption, I mean easy to understand. Often uh, the developers, for example, on Steam are you know, placing the patch notes, which are very technical oriented. And that's great, but like 99% of people who are gonna read that through will not even understand that. Obviously, you know, understanding Unity upgrade from, from one version to another, it's pretty clear. But if you're talking about some physics stuff, it's simply boring. You can take a look on the really great examples of game who are taking care even of the pouch notes, which makes them attractive for the people. And on the other side, we've got marketing team issues. So the first one quite popular among indie devs is that community engagement on social is pretty low. So very crucial, and this is the, always my number one which I've taken to my teams, but please plan up from your communication. If possible, use the development team in the communication because if I'm a potential buyer of your game, if I'm a consumer, I would like to see the human face of the game for which I'm waiting for. It's always great to have, a, for example, a one development team member dedicated for marketing it will become a kind of face of your game and people will get familiar with him or with her. They will like, and they will just wait for that kind of communication. Again, take a look on the communication which we've done for Dying Light. There were a number of people from development team involved and they were very eager to do that because, you know, Dying Light was their baby, so they know it the best. The demo is something related to business. So Steam wishlist uh, is still poor and it's not increasing, despite the fact you're investing some money on a marketing campaign. So recently I've checked that on a daily basis, on Steam, there are like from 22 to 25 game releases. 
it's it's a lot and it's on Steam. Remember that there are other platforms, you know, like Dog, Epic, and, 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 and so on. So the competition is huge. So first of all, you need to find your USB, so your Excel proposal. So the element which will make your game brighter in terms of competition. Because on one hand, you can communicate, hey, this is our roguelike something. But on the other hand, if, if you will be very specific on why people should buy your game, or at least why they should care about that, it will be huge help for a marketing fellow. You can make it through your documentation, because I really hope that each game development starts with a good piece of documentation like GDD. But still, usually you should highlight that, that kind of elements, like game features, USP, because on one hand, it will make your development process easier, because you will see the vision of the game and how should it perform. And on the, on the, on the other hand, if you involve any other marketing person or an agency, they will require such information. So next issue, people don't get what the game is about. So sometimes it's really great to start the development uh, and getting back to your initial thought. Uh, imagine that you are producing your game for two years. It's very easy to get a bit lost. So you had some initial idea, you were developing it, but after a certain time, you're not 100% sure if the game is the same idea which you invented initially. So it's always great to get back and make a kind of retrospective if it's still aligned with the vision or not. Plus, for the people like for audience or journalists, and they especially like that way of communication, is to use the game references. So if you started pitching your game to potential publisher or to journalists, don't say it's, you know, a kind of simulator. You can use a kind of reference like, the game is something like GTA in medieval, medieval times, medieval ages, or it's like Dead Cells meets Celeste. It's a really good comparison because both Dead Cells and Celeste they're critically acclaimed games. So the journalist or your, uh, your potential customer will gonna know what the game is about and he will have certain level of expectation for, for your game. And that's good because he will be more eager to spend his money on your game. On my end, that's it. Yeah, and seriously, there's no slight more. If you have any questions, you can throw it on the Q&A session. I'm here for you. Thank you for your patience and for listening to the presentation. Thanks.